Hello and welcome to this SAP IBP Explainer video series, focused on aggregate constraints. This series is aimed at supply planners, and any other IBP practitioners. In this part 3, we will show you how plant managers can use aggregate constraints, to allocate production capacity across product families. Different product families can have different capacity consumption rates from a shared production line. Given the price differences, Optimizer may allocate the constrained capacity more to the high revenue product families. This is not okay from a business strategy and customer service level perspective. Aggregate constraints help allocate shared capacity across product families. This helps balance revenue optimization with market share goals. Let's review the supply network of a semiconductor company for this example. This company has demands from OEM customers in all regions and an Asia-centric supply and distribution network. We have three product families, microcontrollers, microprocessors, and FPGAs. See the supply network for an example product IBP300 within FPGA product family. All three product families are built in plant 1310 in Hangzhou in China. This plant has an assembly line to produce finished goods across all families. It also has a sub-assembly line to produce semi-finished goods across all families. See details on three finished goods from three different product families here. You can see that all finished goods have dedicated materials, but shared production capacities. This is also the case for all semi-finished goods. We have a common sub-assembly line to produce the semi-finished goods and a common assembly line to produce the finished goods across all product families. See product master details on the left. You can see the product family and category values for all the finished goods and semi-finished goods. You can also review capacity consumption rates on the right. Note that finished goods have different capacity consumption rates across different product families. For example, microcontroller products require one unit of capacity per product from the assembly line. Microprocessor products require two units, while FPGA products require three units of capacity per product. Optimizer needs to balance constrained capacity allocation in the assembly line, given large differences in capacity consumption rates. On the other hand, all semi-finished products need one capacity unit from the sub-assembly line. See the capacity supply available by production line by week. Assembly line has 200,000 units of capacity every week, while sub-assembly line has 100,000 units. You can also see product customer specific prices or non-delivery costs by product family in the bottom table. Note that FPGAs are generally priced higher than microprocessors. Similarly, microprocessors are priced higher than microcontrollers. This drives the optimizer to prioritize FPGA and microprocessor demands over microcontrollers. See weekly consensus demand by product, customer. You can see consensus demands for FPGA family here. Note different customers buy different products and the quantity varies each week. See consensus demand for microcontrollers family. Different customers buy microcontrollers, although some customers buy products across multiple families. Also see consensus demands for microprocessor family. Note that the microcontroller demands are quite comparable to the other two product families. FPGAs and microprocessors. Let's review the initial planning results. You can see the consensus demands and customer receipts for the three product families. This data is aggregated across products and customers. Note that microcontrollers has only 41% fulfillment. This is because we have more demand for assembly line than the current capacity. Optimizer is correctly prioritizing higher revenue demands from FPGA and microprocessor families. This is enabling more than 80% fulfillment for them. Remember these families need much higher capacity in the assembly line, but also have equally high non-delivery costs. You can also see capacity usage of assembly line across the three product families. Total capacity usage is equal to the capacity supply of 200,000 per week. This tells us that the assembly in is fully utilized and we do not have the option to build ahead. Although this may be the revenue optimal plan, this is not in sync with the company strategy to offer a broad portfolio of advanced semiconductors and serve all customers fairly. Microcontroller's BU leader is not okay with this plan. Let's see how the plant manager deals with this situation. 
plant manager decides to constrain the production capacity available to each product family. See the minimum and maximum aggregate production capacity usage constraints to understand this range guidance. The ranges are as follows, 50 to 100K for FPGAs, 60 to 80K for microprocessors, and 30 to 60K for microcontrollers. This pattern is the same across weeks, although it could be different. Optimizer can plan to produce any combination of finished good demands across products and customers in any week, but it must respect these ranges at aggregate product family level. Let's review the revised planning results. Let's review the capacity usage of the assembly line. Remember FPGA products have the highest non-delivery cost rates. Optimizer provides the maximum capacity allowed to FPGA family, which is 100,000 units per week. Microcontroller demands carry the lowest non-delivery cost rates. Optimizer provides the least capacity it must to the microcontroller family which is 30,000 units per the minimum aggregate constraint. This leaves 70,000 units of capacity, given total weekly capacity is 200,000. Optimizer provides all of this remaining capacity to the microprocessor family. Remember microprocessor range was 40 to 80k units. The revised solve has provided a 57% fulfillment to microcontrollers, while still balancing other families. FPGAs are now at 68% fulfillment, while microprocessors are at 91% fulfillment. Microcontroller BU leader and the executive team is okay with this plan. You saw how IBP Supply Optimizer can model aggregate production capacity constraints. This helps plant management implement guardrails to ensure constrained capacity is allocated fairly across product families. We can also model aggregate constraint violation costs to make sure that such aggregate constraints do not produce suboptimal revenue beyond a point. Optimizer will choose to ignore aggregate constraints if violation costs are lower than non-delivery costs. Gita Cloud offers supply optimization as a service. We can help model and run advanced use cases such as aggregate capacity planning within or outside SAP IBP, depending on the complexity of the optimization requirements. You can find more such explainer videos at Gita Cloud website or Gita Cloud YouTube channel. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions regarding the content shared here. Hope you enjoyed this video, please like and share if you did. You can also subscribe to Gita Cloud YouTube channel to stay on top of similar content in future. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.